God created the world. He designed the world for a reason, for a purpose. And there is a way that things work and the way things are supposed to go for that purpose, for those reasons, according to his design. And part of that design includes objective morality. It includes us being moral agents. That is, we have the ability to choose whether to do right or wrong, to make good or evil choices. And there is such a thing as good and evil, such a thing as what is called objective morality. And that's a little redundant because um, objective morality is repetitive because morality by its very nature must be objective. See, objective, that word objective, whenever you're objective, it's not one way or the other. It's, objective means, as philosophers would define it, mind independent. It, it, it's not that way because you think it is. It is that way just because it is. What color is the sky? Well, it's blue. Is it blue because you think it's blue? No, it's blue because it's blue. Doesn't matter what you think, the sky's blue. Doesn't matter what you believe about morality. Morality is a feature of creation. Murder is wrong. Your opinion about it doesn't matter one bit. It is still wrong. What you believe about morality does not change what morality actually is. I heard this example uh, actually just a few days ago, and I went, ooh, I've got to steal that for this week. Um, imagine three guys. You got three guys. They're going up in an airplane, and whenever they get up to a certain altitude, whatever it is, 10,000 feet, 15,000 feet, whatever, they're, they're, they're going to jump out of that plane. Okay? I don't know why people do this. Why would you ever jump out of a perfectly good airplane? I don't understand, but let's say they're going to do it. So they, they're going, they get in their plane, and what do they believe is going to happen when they step out of that airplane? One guy believes as soon as he steps out of that plane, he's going to fly. And so in order to prepare for his trip, he puts on a Superman suit with a cape so that whenever he jumps out of that plane, he can soar through the atmosphere like Superman. The other guy, he believes that whenever he steps out, he's going to float up into uh, orbit. And so he puts on an astronaut suit, a space suit, so he's prepared whenever he goes into orbit. And the third guy, he believes that whenever he steps out of the plane, he's going to fall like a rock, and so he gets a parachute. And so they get in the plane, and the plane takes off, and it gets up to altitude, and they step out, and what happens? They fall like a rock. It doesn't matter what they believed was going to happen. Reality takes over, and down they go. Morality is the same way. It doesn't matter what you believe about morality. What matters is what actually is real. In a recent uh, conversation, I heard, saw an atheist say this. He said, morality does not come from outside of me. He said, it comes from my own agency, from my heart, my intelligence, and expecting to find what is right from external sources he says, is a way of shirking my personal responsibility for the choices I have to make. He says, see, so it's up to me, and I have to choose. I have to wrestle through this to, to, to determine it. And that is absolutely, completely, totally false. It is not the way it works. Morality cannot come from within you. Now, you have to determine, okay, is what I'm believing, is what I am wanting, is what I am doing, does it line up with what is right or wrong? but you don't get to decide what is right or wrong. See, because morality includes what's called an ought. I don't think we use that word all that much anymore. But whenever you say something is moral, you're saying that is what you ought to do. Or when you say something is immoral, what you're saying is that is something you ought not do, what you should do or what you should not do. There is a purpose. There is actually something that says you are supposed to do this, you are supposed to not do that. Well, where does this obligation, where does this responsibility come from? Well, it can't come from in you. It has to come from somewhere else. Because let's say that you believe you're supposed to do this, and I believe you're not supposed to do that. Which one of us is right? Well, if morality comes from inside of us, we're both right. No, we're not. One of us is wrong. Or both of us is wrong. But it has to be some source outside of us. 
that actually says this is what is right or what is wrong. The only way that you can get something you're supposed to do is if you have a supposer. Or the way it's commonly said, a moral law requires a moral law giver. Otherwise, all you get is a bunch of people with different opinions about what they believe is right or wrong. My opinions about right or wrong has no power to obligate you to do them. Morality involves an obligation. That obligation can only come from that transcendent source. Morality requires an outside source in order to be moral. That is above and beyond mankind who created us, created the world, and set up the rules for how we and the world are supposed to function. And one day that creator is going to come back. And the scripture says we are going to give an account. Dead, great, and small are brought forth to stand before God. Lord, though I feel the darkness come, I will not fear you've ransomed me with blood.